、えー、午後の2回目のセッションになりますけれども、えー、引き続き大石と私紀藤で、えー、モデレーター務めさせていただきます、えー、まああのまあご登壇の、えー、皆様にはあ今日午前中にご講演いただいたんですが、えー、もし午前中いらっしゃらない方いらっしゃるといませんしまた、えー、いろいろ情報が詰め込まれていて整理がつかなくなってしまったという方もおられると思いますので簡単に、えー、お一人23分で、えー、もう一度あの、えー、ご報告の肝心な部分をあの伝えていただければと思います。えー、最初にまずその、えー、各自のご報告をしていただきたいと思いますでその次にいくつも質問が来ておりますので、えー、それについてお答えいただくあるいはお互いにあの、えー、先生方の間でまた議論していただくということにしたいと思いますで、えー、ど,どういう順番できますかね、はいえー、とそれではそうですねはい、えー報告朝の報告の順番で、えー、新宿区区長の代わりになります、えー、お願いいたします、えっと、中山区長はあの公務でお帰りになりました、えー、よ,よろしいですか、はいどうぞはいはいえー、皆さんこんにちは、えー、新宿区の地域文化部多文化共生担当副参事をしている月橋と申しますあの本来ですと、あのこの席には午後もあの新宿区長の中山区長が、えー、座ってですね、えー、皆様からのご質問に答えたり、あるいはあの、えー、パネラーの方とディスカッションすべきところでございましたが、えー、残念ながら、えー、本日午後、えー、公務のために、えー、この会は午前中のみで、えー、欠席という形にさせていただきました。であの私がこのような高いところでお話しするのは本当に役不足というか、あのー、申し訳ないと思いますけれども、まあ、あの私はあの今現在、えー、現場でですね、えー、区役所の1階の地域文化部というところで、えー、多文化共生について、えーまあ、専属の担当課長として、えー、多文化共生政策に取り組んでおりますので、そうしたあの仕事の中で見えているいろいろな問題点、課題、えー、そうしたものを皆様と一緒に勉強していければなというふうに思います。であの午前中は中山区長からですね、まあ、あの地域で取り組んでいる、新宿で取り組んでいる多文化共生施策について、えー、お話をさせていただきました。えーまあ、あの区長の、区長のというか、新宿区の基本的な考え方というのは、えー、多様性があの町の活性化につながっていくということが、まあ、一番大きなものでございます。えー、外国籍住民が、えー、約 11% の新宿区において、えー、そうしたものをですね、えー、新宿区は積極的な特徴と捉えて、えー、その、えー、プラスメッセージを発信していくということで、えー、政策を進めておるところでございます。で、あの、いろいろとあの政策については、例えば日本語学習の支援とかですね、えー、外国人相談、情報提供、まあ、ネットワークの構築、え、いろいろと、え、展開をしておりますけれども、やはりあの、新宿区の、え、核となるのは、え、歌舞伎町に2005年の9月に開設しました、新宿多文化共生プラザという施設を、え、がございます。で、もうあの、すでに、え、5年が経過しました。で、ここまでに、ま、あの、約11万人の、え、外国人の方、日本人の方に、え、利用をしていただいております。で、あの、この新宿区においては、この多文化共生プラザが、えー、多文化共生施策の中心核となって、まあ、これからも、えー、ここがもっともっと、えー、能動的にですね、えー、積極的な活動をして、コーディネーターとして、えー、地域と、えー、地域を結んでいくということを、えー、一層進めていきたいというふうに考えております。非常に簡単でございますけれども、新宿の取り組みについてご説明をさせていただきました。はい、ありがとうございます。えー、それでは続きまして、えー、国際移住機関のおウィリアムスプリング事務局長よりお願いしたいと思いますが、何か補足的なご説明いただけますでしょうか。Thank you very much.
Uh, my presentation was very straightforward, consisting of two points. The first one was to try to remind us all of the facts in migration today, uh, namely that we numerically have more people on the move than at any other time in recorded history, 214 million international migrants and 740 million domestic migrants, meaning one out of every seven people in the world is in uh, some form of migration status. Uh, I described how the social media are changing our lives in terms of even migration, where you have uh, almost two billion of our seven billion inhabitants on the globe uh, with access to the internet, 247 billion emails a day, 500 million subscribers to Facebook, 300 million subscribers to Twitter, uh, so that migrants know at any one time what's going on anywhere in the world and can, and can respond accordingly. So that has changed a great deal how we have to look at migration. And I said that although the, these revolutions in communications, information flow, and transportation had actually been the drive, had been the, what had fueled this large expanse, uh, expansion of migration. It was, in fact, three other elements that would ensure that migration remains a, what I called a mega trend in the 21st century. The first of these three elements was what I call demographic stagnation, where almost all of the, of the industrialized countries in the OECD, including Japan, uh, Western Europe, Canada, United States, etc., almost all have negative replacement <coughs> rates. In other words, more people dying than are being born. Uh, bearing this in mind uh, leads you to a second uh, consideration, which is with these demographic trends, it seems highly unlikely that you're going to be able to meet your labor market requirements without a proactive, positive migration policy that seeks to see migrants as contributors and not people who are taking jobs, usually which are jobs that locals don't want or for which there are not enough locals to do. And the third consideration is related to both of those, which is a widening north-south gap, both in demography, where you have a high birth rate in the south, a negative birth rate in the north, too many jobs to be filled in the north, and virtually no job creation in the South, so that the push-pull factors are very clear and evident. That led me then to my second point, which is simply to say that with the, if, if you accept these assumptions, and I think the facts are there to cause us to accept them, then there's only one relevant question. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to manage the migration issue the migration challenge and the migration opportunity in a manner that is responsible, humane, and orderly. And for that, I said, you know, you've got a couple of choices. You can take the traditional low road approach, which is to say, uh, we don't want any migrants, let's close our doors, let's tighten the migration policy and the visa regimes, which will simply push more people into the hands of human traffickers and smugglers of human beings. Or you take a high road scenario, which is say, let's look at this positively. We need help. We need, and we'd like to have people come here. Uh, and so you, you look at your national laws, and is this a national law that is in the interest of our people and of migrants? You say, are we linked up as a government? Is the administration and the parliament, are they talking together? Do we have an interministerial approach to, to this? If you turn it over to one ministry, uh, I don't know what I mean to cast aspersions, whether it's interior justice, the primary focus is going to be on police training, border control, occasionally having to send people back. But if you look at, the, at the social affairs or the human rights ministry, they'll have other concerns. And I know from my own diplomatic background what the foreign minister will think. What's the effect going to be on countries of origin? So. But if you link them all up, they'll come up with a balanced policy that will serve both the national interests and those of the migrants. And there are many other features to this, realizing that migration cannot be handled on a national basis. It has to be done regionally and eventually globally, 
so that you get involved in regional consultation processes with other countries. And having done all of that, the uh, uh, global approach, you have then to do, get engaged as a government, including the parliament, in a public information and public education campaign to get the facts before the people. There, there are no statistics around that show that migrants create more, uh, make more crime, uh, cre commit more acts of crime than na uh, natives do, uh, clear up the stereotypes and the uh, false images of migration and look at their contributions. Um, and there are various schemes that you can use. I ended up by simply saying that there's no magic formula, but there is a, there are parameters that you can speak of. One would be uh, a two-part policy which accepts a country's sovereignty to determine who enters and on what terms and also what one can expect of migrants, that they will respect local custom and laws. But on the other hand, that states will recognize the age-old desire of humankind to move when it's necessary to have a better life and the expectation that if you move, that your rights are going to be expected. Well, that's an overly long presentation, but it's a subject about which uh, Obviously, I have some feelings, and I was glad to share them with you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Next, 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 uh, I began with a bit of an overview of uh, the Metropolis uh, Network and the special initiative that we call Metropolis Asia, uh, to which I once again would like to invite as many of you uh, uh, as are interested to consider working with us. Uh, what we hope to do is uh, very simply to enhance migration and integration policy through an application of empirical research. I then spent a, a little bit of time knowing that uh, migration can be managed both through domestic policy and foreign policy, and that despite the, uh, the obvious fact that international migration is an international phenomenon involving more than one country, it tends to be managed as almost entirely domestic policy, and that foreign policy elements are, are often lacking. Um, and it seems to me, and this I think dovetails nicely with uh, what Mr. Swing just said, that if we do look at migration uh, as well as a foreign policy matter and thereby engage actively with other countries, in particular countries of origin, we will stand a better chance of having a humane and orderly result. I uh, noted that a country that embarks on a project of immigration, of welcoming or accepting uh, newcomers to their society is automatically, immediately going to be increasing the diversity of, uh, of its society and that therefore uh, immigration policy to be well handled must be accompanied by a diversity policy, whatever you want to, to make of that. And I specifically noted that the uh, frequently cited dichotomy or the frequently cited uh, absolute choice that countries need to make between multiculturalism and integration is a false dichotomy that in fact multiculturalism can and successfully has been uh, uh, in the service of the integration of immigrants. And so uh, the, the general advice I suppose that I, I might uh, be inclined to give is that any country that embarks seriously on immigration needs to embark seriously on diversity policy and in such a way as to retain the public confidence uh, in the government's ability to manage these two, uh, these two phenomena. どうもありがとうございました。重要な指摘を再度あのしていただ。